Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to work on this watercolor painting and I'm also going to talk a bit about what I could learn from my past self as an artist. So there are so many things that I could teach my past self, things that I've improved on, I've learned through hard work and struggles and just plain practice and and time spent drawing, but at the beginning of this year, I guess still right now, where I'm, I'm making all of these goals and plans for 2020 and I want to really push myself beyond where I've settled the past few years. And while I was making those goals and thinking about it, of course I started thinking back about where I was at in years past and even more years past as an artist, how much I've learned and grown. and. I think that that's really very helpful as an artist to be able to take a step back and remember how far you really have gone. But as I was doing that, I, I started realizing there are things that, that I used to do so much better when I was younger and those things have faded away. So I would really like to be able to recommit to some of those positive attributes that I used to have and bring that back into my work in a way that, that I, I think will be really exciting and positive but yeah hopefully these things are some things that maybe you recognize in yourself and you can learn from my mistakes and figure out how to make sure that things that you really value currently in the way that you work remains there but but I do want to give a really quick little announcement the painting that I'm working on today is actually going to be the patreon exclusive postcard for the month of January so the only way to get this as a print is to make sure that you sign up by the end of the month for a $10 tier or up for international or in the US and this will come to you in the mail. I, I'm really excited about this one actually. I love how it turned out so I'm excited to send it off to my patrons. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's jump in and talk about the things that, that I would like to learn from my past artist self. So looking back, the first thing that came to mind of something that I used to love the feeling of and I almost never have now is that feeling of conquering a challenge. So so there used to be a lot more things that I was challenged with with my artwork and and that's how it is with everyone as you're growing as an artist. You get better at things and then those things that used to be really hard aren't as hard anymore. And then those hard things get replaced by something else. But But I remember being in middle school and high school and sitting down with a sketch of a character and I would just spend hours and hours redrawing certain things. I would draw the face over and over again or the arm over and over and over again because I just couldn't quite get it right. And I remember, I'm sure there were times where I was frustrated, but I remember that that I didn't have this like negative attachment to, to working that way, that it felt more like I was just going to keep working at it till I figured it out. And then when I finally cracked it and I got it to look right, I was just so euphoric with that experience. I felt so much more connected with the piece because I had spent so much time working through that and finally getting it right. And it was so exciting and I loved that feeling. And, and now, I mean, it's, it's certainly a nice thing that, that there aren't as many things that I'm always drawing that gives me these challenges. But, but I also find that, that the things that I do still have struggles with, I don't give myself credit for, for figuring it out nearly as much as I used to. I find more that I'm annoyed at myself that it was a challenge in the first place, which is so not productive for, for me and for being positive with, with forward momentum with my work. So, so things like when I'm working on a color palette and it's really challenging and I can't quite figure it out, it feels good when I figure it out, but at the same time, it's not that level that it used to be of excitement and, and eagerness to continue working on that piece. It's more like, oh good, I finally figured it out. I don't know why it was such a struggle. I want to turn that around. I want to be able to really just give myself credit when, when something was hard and I figured it out. It doesn't even have to be a huge struggle either. I think there's a lot of things that are, are things that take a little bit more effort than it usually does. If it's like a weird hand position or, or anything like that, or a new technique that I, I hadn't quite figured out. And then I unlock something. I, I really would like to be able to give myself a moment of, of being able to give myself credit and be excited about that and feel re-engaged with that piece and, and feel like I really have a connection with it. 
So the second thing that I want to learn from my past artist self is actually to embrace challenges, which is very closely related, I think, to the first one. I, I used to just totally expect challenges to be part of the process because it was. It was hard to make things work right for for a really long time. And and now I I find that it's not that I'm avoiding things or that I'm I'm shying away from challenges, but I think that it's more the things that are challenging. I I have to actually think about pushing myself there. The things that I tend to just naturally like to draw and paint, it's definitely falling within a set of skills that that I feel mostly comfortable with. But I want to push past that. I want to actually look for things that will be hard for me to figure out and it will be frustrating and it will be a struggle. There are so many things that I want to focus on and get better at, but they're things that that are just a little bit more fine-tuned, I think. So so if I'm not paying attention and I'm not actively striving for those challenges, then I'm not going to reach those those points. Like I used to all the time with my pieces where I would constantly run into challenges. And because I was running into those challenges, I was growing and I was improving. And I think that in a lot of ways, that's that's something that's really restricting my growth now. And And I have been trying a lot more lately to take stock of what things do I actually want in my work And how can I bridge that gap? How can I figure that out? So there have been a lot of challenges that I've, I've tried to include in the way that I'm working, but there's a lot more that I want. I want the challenge of figuring out a much more technical way of approaching shadows and how light plays on the surfaces of things. I, I really simplify that kind of thing down a lot. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to push myself and really challenge myself to figure out how to do this thing that's really, really above my head and really challenging. So, so yes, that that is certainly something that I think I was a lot braver with when I was younger. I I was just ready to to go into something that I knew I wasn't going to be good at because I didn't feel like I was really that good at most things. I think so. It, it helped to be able to just give me that confidence to just not care as much, I guess, of of giving myself that challenge. And now I think that I am just falling back into my safe zone a lot. I, there's been a lot of things that I I actually am pretty proud of myself for for figuring out and pushing past and getting better at. But there's so many more that that I really want to be able to conquer. <laughs> And I think the third and final thing that I really, really, this is the biggest one for me, I think, want to learn from my past self is I I just want to be able to start dreaming more like I used to. I, looking back, I just got so much more inspiration from, from the media that I was consuming because I think that I was seeking out things that I really got something out of, I really enjoyed and... And I would just sit there and imagine new characters for it. And I would imagine more about the world and the environment. Video games in particular were always and still are a huge inspiration for me. But but yeah, I just remember sitting there and getting lost in my own thoughts and imagination so much more than I do now. I, I spent so much time just dreaming up these characters and the adventures they'd go on. And then I would draw those characters and it was so immersive and exciting. And when I was creating art, it felt like I was exploring something that was already in my head and I just wanted to see it in this visual way. And I just don't work like that anymore. And I miss that so much. I truly feel like that was the driving force for me wanting to be an artist and for me to create artwork. And I want to bring that fire back into the way that I work now. I, I think I got a little a little technical with the way that I, I work now, where it's it's time to make a new piece. And I, I know that I like to do this and this and this. I like to do fantasy and I like to do this kind of character or this kind of color palette. And, and then it just ends up really sterilized. There's not as much of this backstory or soul to it because I haven't been dreaming about it or dreaming about things like it, like I used to. So I'm trying to to get back in touch with my, my childhood wonder and how I would 
I w how I would be able to look at something and it would just spark this new idea and imagination. And I don't know, it's, I think this is going to be the most challenging of these three things that I'm giving myself to learn from because it is so hard to grasp. It is something that I don't exactly know how, how to go about it. I don't know exactly what things should be sparking interest or if the fact that I, I'm trying to think that way would Detour, deter, there we go, deter my my inspiration from it. But but I'm just going to try to open myself up to more to more dreaming, more thinking, more imagining. And I, I find that really exciting. There's been a lot of years in my life where that just wasn't at all part of who I was. And it was such a strong part of me for so long that, that now that I'm looking back and realizing that it's been missing, I feel so much more invigorated just knowing that that's something that, that maybe I can get back in touch with and that that's something that can feed into my artwork. And I don't know, it feels exciting. <laughs> I feel excited about this, about being able to dive in more with that. I, I also used to read way more than I do now. I almost never read and I loved stories. That was something that, that again, it just fed into my imagination. It made me want to imagine these stories and, and these characters. And I think that's a big part of why I don't really think that way anymore, because I'm not inputting that kind of, that kind of inspiration, that kind of story based inspiration into my brain. So so maybe I need to give myself a goal this year to read a certain amount of books or or at least to just start reading. I think that would be a big a big help putting me right onto the right path. And if you like a print of this piece, make sure that you sign up for one of the $10 tiers or up over on my Patreon. That way I get to mail it to you at the end of this month. I'm really excited about this postcard actually. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, but yes, that will be the only way to get a print of her. So act fast if you'd like it. And I do have the original painting up at my shop as well. And of course the link to my Patreon is down in the link. So down in the description. So you can follow that link to my Patreon and sign up. Uh, but that's about it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will be back next week with another art video. 